cheetahs, high-speed hunters of the savannah. Few dare to take on larger prey. But then a group emerges that turns all concepts upside down. Five males unite and become the antelope's worst nightmare. This coalition enjoys whole new possibilities, but they also have to face unexpected conflicts. The northern Serengeti is home to around 100 cheetahs. They share this habitat with countless antelopes and give fascinating and new insights into the way the slim hunters live. Let's follow some of them and experience their struggle for survival. A young female has hidden her four cubs in a bush. They are just a few days old and completely helpless. In these first weeks, the mother cannot leave them alone for longer spells of time. Another family is resting nearby. The experienced female has raised many young. Her two sons are almost adults and can soon look after themselves. They are well nourished and play around with self-confidence. Many challenges lay ahead of them. Daily training is essential. Many battles will have to be fought in order to eventually secure a personal territory. a few dozen kilometers away. An unusual concentration of cheetahs. Five males, the largest coalition ever seen. Normally, brothers form alliances to defend a territory. Every now and again, loners join them, and sometimes three cats call one territory their own. Five males are quite a novelty, even for scientists. They were first seen together at the end of 2016. They comprised two strong mavericks and three younger males of two different mothers. Quite a wild mixture. But this coalition raises questions, as it contradicts everything we have ever learned about cheetahs. Why were the three youngsters accepted as partners by the strong males? Weaker animals are usually attacked and chased away. Perhaps the five came together when the two elders had not yet a territory of their own, which would explain why they didn't display any aggressive defense behavior. Beginners are not necessarily a reinforcement. There's certainly no lack of commitment, impatiently, one of the new ones makes ready for the hunt. But in the decisive moment, he doesn't dare to go the whole hog, meaning lunch is off the itinerary. One should never miss promising opportunities such as these. But this seems to be easy prey. Once again, one of the young males is impatient. He starts from a great distance. The torpy calf is just a few days old and is hardly challenging. But the wildebeests unsettle him. It takes him too long to pass them by.
The mother intervenes in the very last moment. The result? Five hungry hunters. It wouldn't have been a problem for a single experienced cheetah. Their merger remains a mystery. Just as strange is the fact that they still remain together. The mother with the four babies has left her bush hiding place. Like all cheetah females, she roams freely without a territory, always after prey. The first days moving from place to place are very exhausting for the little ones. She has to be extremely careful. The cubs, however, pay little heed to the countless dangers of the savannah. The female cheetah has to produce a lot of milk and is therefore almost always hungry. It's not easy to go hunting with babies by her side. She also searches for food the next day, but she is not the only huntress in the area. Dense shrubbery lies in front of the cheetahs, difficult to pass for the cubs. She carefully musters the area as she fears surprises may lurk. The lioness has discovered the young family. Carnivores know no mercy among themselves. For the lioness, it would be a chance to get rid of future competition. In desperation, the mother tries to distract the attacker. Her courage and commitment give the cubs precious seconds. She spends the entire afternoon searching for her little ones. Did they get lost? Or did the lioness manage to get hold of some of them? Just one cub resurfaces. The lioness was successful in as much as she was able to harm a rival. The two sons of the old female have already been through this critical phase, but even adult cheetahs should steer clear of encounters with lions. The family has other concerns. They are in need of food. Thompson gazelles are a welcome prey for cheetahs. Nonetheless, the female hesitates. Age has crept up on her. 
On open terrain, she has no chance of reaching gazelles. With a bit of luck, she can sometimes get close enough to the gazelles without cover before they realize the danger. Off she goes, and indeed, she successfully shortens the distance until the gazelles react. Now it's an open race, as Thompson gazelles can move almost as fast as cheetahs. In the field, cheetahs rarely run faster than 70 kilometers per hour. In open country like this, they might reach 90 kilometers per hour. So, can the gazelles. The mother is feeling worse for wear at the grand old age of 12. When hunting wildebeest, on the other hand, it's not just about speed. But the heavy animals are tough opponents. Cheetahs can only bring down calves, and this is a task that just a few cheetah females take on. But this one does. With time, she has become a specialist for wildebeests. Patiently, she waits until the herd approaches her, meter for meter. The wildebeests are not aware of the danger until the very last moment. But it's hardly a piece of cake for the experienced female either. The calf is just as heavy as the attacker, and the pointed horns can be lethal. The sons have great respect for prey like this. They make themselves useful by keeping the other wildebeests busy. While female cheetahs roam in pursuit of prey, adult males try to settle down and conquer a territory. The coalition, on the other hand, doesn't even attempt to settle down. During their initial few months together, they traversed a huge area, much larger than hitherto assumed when examining groups. The males also have a problem with the speedy Thompson gazelles. They are bigger and heavier than the females, and thus slower. Their goal is also wildebeest calves. The gazelle fawns should go and hide. They can't run fast enough yet and inconspicuously stoop down. The cheetah sees the right moment, but the adult antelopes skillfully shield the calf. His colleague has discovered something completely different. The attack on the herd startled a little fawn. The hunters appear to be doing their best not to cause it any harm.
play around with the little gazelle as if it were a toy. Older animals wouldn't dwell on this. For the beginners, it's a good opportunity to gain more confidence in handling prey. Rival males have no chance against this coalition. So, for a long time, they could move around as it pleased them without settling down. In the meantime, however, they are concentrating on the northern area of the Masai Mara Reserve. Here, they claim a territory of more than 400 square kilometers, four times larger than any in the southern Serengeti. Vast territory like this has many advantages when it comes to prey. They will rarely have to go hungry. The hunters can approach without cover. The wildebeests don't recognize them as a danger, as few cheetahs would try their luck against adult antelopes. Nonetheless, the cats are making the herd nervous. Soon, chaos breaks out. Some calves lose contact with their mothers. This is what they've been waiting for. Meanwhile, the five have made great progress. Even the younger ones now dare to tackle calves. A throat bite seals the hunt, but this is still the job for the experienced cats. Soon it will be time for the old female to take leave of her two sons. Meanwhile, the offspring are 18 months old and still have a lot to learn. This is why the female now leaves much of the hunting to them. Eagerly, they get to work, but stalking isn't as simple as it looks. They no longer lack speed, but taking the decisive leap on their prey is another story. Cheetahs hunt at all times of the day, lunch times too when the opportunity arises. But it's significantly more pleasant in the shade. But anyway, zebras would be a touch too ambitious. The two stallions are arguing over a mare. Zebras don't have obvious weapons, but their bites and hoof kicks can cause serious injury. For the young cheetahs, a great spectacle, fascinating to watch.
The experienced female has chosen a good place to take some time out. She knows that herds often journey through the valley and head here when thirsty. As expected, there are cows in the herd. Her trainees are committed to what they do. Once again, she lets her offspring take the lead. A challenging task for beginners. They would usually practice on much smaller gazelles. <laughs> The sons managed to surprise the antelopes. Unfortunately, they've chosen two different calves. One of the two loses sight of the prey in the thicket. The mother arrives too late to intervene. The second still has a chance. But he hesitates at the decisive moment. The outcome of the hunt is in favor of the calf. In the afternoon, a severe storm rose. The two cheetahs are not worried about the rain. In fact, they seem to be enjoying the flooded ground. But then it becomes a bit too much of a good thing. With so much water, the ungulates search for higher ground. When the rain eases up, the youngsters seem a lot livelier.
Mother has no time for games. But this evening, she certainly appears more adventurous than usual. The herd is still far away, but in the rain, the ungulates can't hear very well at all. This is a decisive advantage, which the experienced huntress uses for herself. The wildebeests want to leave the wet valley. They still haven't noticed the proximity of the cats. When they do realize the danger, it's far too late. The female takes on the initiative. This is not something for beginners. The sons try their best to support her, but the wildebeest mother remains undaunted and returns to her calf. She doesn't dare to attack the cat, but her presence was enough. The huntress backs off and the calf comes free for the time being. Completely dazed, it takes a few seconds before the calf regains its senses but now the huntress reacts with fierce determination. The heavy rain caused the rivers to swell greatly in just a few hours. This is an unexpected obstacle for the group. Until now, there was nothing more than a trickle here. They have often crossed the river with dry paws. They were not expecting masses of water like this. They are unsettled.
They don't know what lurks in the raging river, but they have to reach the other side to move on. Cheetahs are not exactly born swimmers. One of the big males goes first. The others follow. Their union is stronger than their fear. The last one makes it too. More or less dry to the other side. By the afternoon, they've already put a lot of mileage behind them. For this group, having a big territory is not only full of advantages. When females are ready to mate, they move into territories that have been marked intensively by males. These males don't have such a clearly advertised meeting place because their marks are spread over a large area. They can mate with all females they come across. But first, they have to find them. On their patrols, they inspect hundreds of marking trees and leave their own messages. Although they put in so much effort, their success rate in gaining partners is not very high. Instead, they are opening increasingly more hunting grounds, there where their prey doesn't expect them to be. Even from afar, the shrewd Thompson gazelles have discovered the cats. On alert, they have nothing to fear. One of the youngsters can't resist at least the chance to shake them up a bit. But that's already been settled. Torpies also feel secure. They can't keep up with the pace of cheetahs. But then again, the lightweight hunters rarely dare to even consider such large animals. The calves stand well guarded in the open terrain, from where they can spot threats from great distances. But the antelopes are not dealing with loners, but rather with five fully grown males. The bull is alone and totally relaxed. They didn't expect such fierce resistance. His sharp horns are dangerously close. Out of breath, the bull is unable to take his last chance. The combined weight of the five keep him down prevent any further escape. Cheetahs don't have particularly long or strong teeth with which to inflict serious wounds, 
so they must exhaust their prey. Once again, it's the two strong males that decide the fight's outcome. Under their throat bites, the bull loses consciousness. Totally exhausted, they look for shade. But success like this makes them ever more confident. The female that was ambushed by the lioness is now alone, single. Very small young are often abandoned. Without offspring, cheetah females are ready to mate every two to three weeks. She wants a new litter to raise as many young as possible. The wildebeest bulls follow her out of curiosity. They have nothing to fear from individual cheetahs. The five males have found her trail. Attentively, they search through their resting place and then follow her tracks. It takes almost the whole day until they find the female the next morning. The encounter appears ominous. The males attempt to intimidate her. She is anything but impressed and defends herself as best she can. The cats too have differences of opinion as to who is allowed to approach the female and who isn't. After the initial excitement, they check her smell intensively to ascertain her readiness to mate. As inexperienced as they are, they seem uncertain as to what to do next. The female has been waiting for a moment like this and tries to flee, but she is quickly surrounded from all sides again and literally has her back to the wall. Cheetah mating behavior can appear to be quite rough. The males demonstrate their strength to the females. Competition is much fiercer between the five than is the case in smaller groups. So it's not only the female fighting back, the males themselves are mainly busy with one another. The males lose a lot of fur on days like these, but this is not the most frustrating thing. They simply don't want to realize that they are flogging a dead horse. The female is not yet able to conceive. The noisy party has attracted a disagreeable neighbor. Usually they would simply give way. 
Now the cats are so inflamed that they would even snarl at a buffalo. Which he, of course, doesn't find amusing. In the end, they all leave frustrated. The experienced cheetah's sons are still far from adventures like this. They continue to practice their hunting techniques and gain much valuable experience on a daily basis. Like just how to deal with warthogs. Piglet may be a tasty morsel, but it's unwise to play around with its fully grown mother. They begin optimistically. A nasty surprise. The angry mother turns the tables. He has to have his wits about him to get out of this situation unscathed. In doing so, he keeps the path clear for his brother. He can squeeze by the other warthogs without them noticing. he has to worry about his health. He shows what he has learned so far. The rest is now routine. Tactically, they have played the warthogs well. Huge herds of wildebeest have been gathering for days in a wide river bend. In the morning, optimism is in the air. The gathering has not escaped the cheetahs. The trees on the river banks are an ideal source of food for giraffes. Unfazed, they simply make their way through the center of the herd. The antelope's goal is another. They just want to cross the river. The water is not too deep. It looks like a good place. But on the opposite bank, traffic is piling up. The last few meters dip sharply. No chance of progressing from here. 
Before long, the riverbed is full of wildebeests. More and more animals turn around and climb the steep face from whence they just came. Just above, the exhausted antelopes have to catch a breather. The cheetahs also lose track in the back and forth. The two big cats leave their cover and attack a wildebeest bull directly. The other cheetahs are surprised. They can't make out anything at all. Panic spreads among the ungulates. The giraffes get nervous too. A kick like this can easily crush a skull. Between the bushes, the wildebeests can't see what has happened. They can only hear the noise and sense the fear of the herd. Now the cavalry arrives in the shape of the other cheetahs, and they are sorely needed. Their victim is a fully grown bull. With his 200 kilograms, he is four times the size of a cheetah and fights as best as he can for his life. The giraffes try to flee the chaos. The jostling unsettles them as they are not particularly agile. All they want is to leave the crowd behind them. The hunter that attacked first is gasping for breath and resting. The others will have to do without him for a while. They have never taken on a fully grown bull before and soon reach their limits. They eventually manage to administer the decisive bite. The wildebeest gradually loses consciousness. They have finally made it. A sworn alliance of determined warriors, all for one and one for all. Even though they row with one another every so often, if they stay healthy, they could rule the plains of the northern Serengeti for many years to come. No other cheetah would stand a chance. For the sons of the old female, this does not bode well. They will have to fight far away for a place in the cheetah society. The five have opened a new chapter about cheetahs, but it remains to be seen whether they really benefit from this union. That is, whether all of them will reproduce more often than other cheetahs.
being in the shadow of this mighty coalition makes life for all the other males in the region tough. After all, the two brothers are better off together than having to make their way alone. And perhaps they will find a partner to support their brotherhood, to overcome the enormous challenges that the savannah demands of them. <laughs>